Ah, the enchanting flicker of a bygone era's television screen, where black and white danced to life in the form of capes, masks, and a resounding call of justice. Picture this, a cozy living room, the air tinged with nostalgia, as you settled in for your first tryst with the iconic 1966 TV series, Batman. The anticipation palpable, the excitement contagious. Little did you know, a world of campy adventures and indelible memories was about to unfold before your eyes. Do you recall that moment when the screen burst to life and the unforgettable theme song, an irresistible concoction of trumpets and suspense, grabbed you by the senses? Gotham City materialized, a playground of vivid colors and improbable gadgets, where the dynamic duo, Batman and Robin, waged a flamboyant war against villains whose names alone could tickle a smile onto your lips. As the narrative danced between suspense and hilarity, who could forget the electrifying charisma of Adam West as Batman, his solemn voice and unwavering dedication to truth and virtue? And then, there was Burt Ward as the boy wonder Robin, with his infectious enthusiasm and trademark exclamations that echoed in your mind long after the episode concluded. But oh, the villains. The show's robes gallery was a spectacle of eccentricity. From Cesar Romero's Joker with his painted over mustache and maniacal laughter to Burgess Meredith's Penguin squawking out wicked schemes, each antagonist left an indelible mark on your young heart. Now, as we step back into the annals of time, I invite you to join me in revisiting those sensational moments, those whimsical gadgets, and those unforgettable showdowns. Let's unveil the curtain on some lesser-known facts about the show that painted our screens with zest and quirkiness, and perhaps y'all find yourself reminiscing about the time you first encountered this charming slice of television history. So, buckle up for a journey into the Batcave of random facts about the 1966 TV series, Batman, where camp met capes in an explosion of retro delight. Get ready to be enthralled, surprised, and perhaps even shocked by the curious trivia that danced behind the scenes of this iconic show. Unveiling the glitz and glamour behind 1966 TV series Batman's star-studded cameos in the vibrant realm of 1960s television. One show reigned supreme, capturing the essence of camp and comic book heroics, the iconic Batman series. While the caped crusader and boy wonder thwarted villains with tongue-in-cheek panache, the show's star-studded roster of guest appearances added an extra layer of allure. From the likes of Frank Sinatra to Bruce Lee, Hollywood's elite clamored to join the dynamic duo, though not all managed to slip into the bad suits. The show's charm extended beyond Gotham City, with Tinseltown's Cream de la Cream vying for their moment in the bad spotlight. Screen legends such as Cary Grant, Natalie Wood, and Frank Sinatra expressed a fervent desire to grace the series set. Alas, the producers struggled to conjure up suitable roles for these luminaries, leaving their aspirations unfulfilled. However, some managed to bridge the gap between silver screen and small screen. The suave Van Williams and the martial arts maestro Bruce Lee embarked on an unforgettable crossover event with the dynamic duo and their green hornet alter egos. Their daring escapades drew audiences deeper into the dynamic universe of caped crusaders and vigilant vigilantes. Additionally, Williams and Lee playfully engaged in window cameos, a playful nod to the show's whimsical spirit. But the show's behind-the-scenes intrigue doesn't stop there. The steps leading to Commissioner Gordon's office, a familiar sight in the show's opening sequence, are more than just cinematic artifice. These steps, located on the venerable Warner Brothers lot, harbor a triangular building facade. Curiously, this angular edifice isn't just a prop. It houses the extensive wardrobe collection of none other than Clint Eastwood, spanning his illustrious cinematic journey. As the annals of television history continue to beckon, the 1966 Batman series stands as a testament to the convergence of pop culture and stardom. From thwarting villains to charming Hollywood's elite, the show's legacy endures, captivating new generations with its light-hearted heroics and star-studded cameos. And Baxter's dual villainy in Batman 66, a singular achievement in the annals of television history, one name stands out among the kaleidoscope of capes and crime. On Baxter, 
during the triumphant run of the iconic 1966 TV series Batman. Baxter etched her name into the Batcave of pop culture by achieving a rare feat, playing not one, but two special guest villains. Known for her portrayals of beguiling femmes fatales, Baxter's versatility shone as she took on the personas of both Zelda and Alga, Queen of the Cossacks. While Gotham's dynamic duo, portrayed by Adam West and Burt Ward, battled the flamboyant likes of the Joker, the Penguin, and the Riddler, Baxter's magnetic performances added an electrifying twist to the rogues gallery. Zelda, with her sinuous charm and penchant for grand theft, captivated audiences as she weaved her wicked schemes. Then, just as viewers thought they had seen the extent of Baxter's artistry, she reemerged as Alga, an enigmatic monarch with a penchant for Cossack conquests. Her dual roles set an unprecedented standard for the series, securing her a unique place in the Bat Pantheon. The legacy of Baxter's dual villainy is not to be underestimated. In the sprawling universe of comic adaptations, her portrayal remains a testament to the early experimentation and innovation of the genre. With each nefarious cackle and every audacious plot, and Baxter brought depth to the dimensions of villainy, etching her name into the annals of television history. And Baxter's twin triumphs as Zelda and Alga remain an indelible chapter in the grand narrative of Batman 66. Her performances, as vivid and varied as the Gotham skyline, continue to inspire a new generation of actors and fans, reminding us that even within the confines of a comic strip, true artistry knows no bounds. When portraying the iconic character of the Joker in the 1966 TV series Batman, Cesar Romero opted for an unconventional approach. Rather than sacrificing his trademark mustache, Romero chose to paint over it with white makeup, preserving his distinct facial hair while embodying the clown prince of crime. This creative decision, though unorthodox, allowed Romero to maintain his signature look while bringing his own unique flair to the role of the maniacal villain. The show's array of villains mostly hailed from the Batman comics, but a handful had their origins in other hero stories. The Archer and the Puzzler, for instance, were adversaries lifted from the world of Superman, while Clock King originally menaced Green Arrow. This crossover of villains from different superhero narratives added an unexpected layer of complexity to the show's robes gallery, sparking both intrigue and speculation among viewers. One particularly poignant facet of the 1966 Batman series is its connection to the co-creator Bill Finger. During his lifetime, Finger received a rare credit in the show's opening, an acknowledgement largely absent from other Batman media. Tragically, he passed away in 1974 without his groundbreaking contributions to the Dark Knight's mythology receiving their due recognition. It wasn't until 2015 that Finger's family successfully petitioned DC Comics to formally credit him as the co-creator alongside Bob Kane. This overdue recognition now stands as a testament to Finger's lasting impact on the world of Batman, immortalizing his name in the annals of pop culture history. In the captivating realm of 1966 Batman, where vibrant characters and dynamic narratives took center stage, Cesar Romero's mustache painting portrayal of the Joker, the interweaving of villains from various comic book universes, and the belated credit to co-creator Bill Finger all stand as testament to the series' enduring influence on the Batman 1966 film. Batman series, a crooked perspective on villainous hideouts in the iconic 1966 TV series Batman. Every villain's hideout was a scene askew, filmed at a distinctive angle known as an oblique or Dutch angle. This deliberate choice gave viewers an immediate sense of unease, as if something was awry within the scene itself. The visual technique mirrored the twisted nature of the show's villains, emphasizing their crooked intentions. The use of oblique angles became a signature visual element throughout the series, perfectly capturing the campy yet suspenseful tone that the show was renowned for. From the Joker's lair to the Riddler's puzzles, the skewed camera angles became a creative tool to subliminally communicate the moral ambiguity of the villains. This technique exemplified the show's commitment to blending humor and suspense in an unconventional manner. But it wasn't just a stylistic quirk. The deliberate choice of oblique angles by the show's creators, William Dozier and Lorenzo Semple Jr., brought an innovative dimension to the on-screen storytelling. The crooked compositions added to the overall atmosphere of tension and absurdity, ultimately contributing to the show's lasting impact and legacy. 
Though the series has seen various reboots and adaptations over the years, this distinct visual approach remains emblematic of the 1966 Batman series. The oblique angles stand as a testament to the show's unique ability to blend narrative depth with campy charm, solidifying its place in television history. In the iconic 1966 TV series Batman, a trio of major villains never graced the small screen. Despite their ink prominence, Poison Ivy, Scarecrow, and Two-Face, the tantalizing prospect of Two-Face almost materialized. A television commentator turned disfigured villain with a televised blowout. But alas, cancellation thwarted his live-action debut. Fate, however, had other plans. Ivy found life in Batman and Robin, Scarecrow took root in Batman Begins and the Dark Knight Rises, while Two-Face made his mark in Batman Forever and the Dark Knight. A curious twist emerged when Adam West's Batman crossed paths with Two-Face in the animated sequel, Batman vs. Two-Face, marking West's poignant final act. Interestingly, the Riddler's evolution mirrored a suitably enigmatic path. Frank Gorshin's disdain for the Riddler's snug attire led to a groundbreaking solution, the Riddler business suit. Its incorporation into the TV series later wove it into the fabric of Batman comics, solidifying its status as the character's definitive garb. Across the Atlantic, the Cape Crusader's escapade stirred a peculiar tempest. Upon airing in England, youthful enthusiasts, gripped by Batman's flight, mimicked the act by soaring out of windows, an ill-fated endeavor. To quell this hazardous trend, Adam West, in his role as Batman, took to the screen once more. His filmed admonishment, a testament to gravity's rule, firmly grounded the fantasy of human flight. In the kaleidoscope of pop culture, the 1966 Batman series remains an iridescent gem, replete with untaken paths, enigmatic style choices, and unexpected cultural ripples. The journey of the dynamic duo continues to captivate, a testament to the enduring allure of Gotham's dark vigilante. As we bid adieu to the Batcave and the iconic Bam, S and Pow, S of the 1966 TV series Batman, let's take a moment to let the bat signal of nostalgia shine upon our memories. Whether you found yourself drawn to the campy charm, the dynamic duo's witty banter, or the unforgettable villains who danced across the screen with mischief in their eyes. This series has a way of etching itself into our mindscape like the bat symbol against the night sky. Perhaps you recall the anticipation of each episode, the way the Batmobile revved up your excitement, or the infectious tunes that had you humming along in the most unexpected moments. Maybe it was the kaleidoscope of colors that painted Gotham City, or the undeniable chemistry between Adam West's Batman and Burt Ward's Robin that kept you coming back for more Cape Crusader adventures. As the credits roll on this chapter of television history, it's your turn to shine the bat signal on your own connection to the show. What moments made you laugh out loud? Which villains left an indelible mark on your psyche? How has the legacy of Batman 66 shaped your perception of the Dark Knight? We invite you to share your thoughts, stories, and fondest memories of the 1966 Batman series. Your unique perspective is like a bat-shaped puzzle piece that completes the larger picture of why this show remains a beloved treasure even after all these years. So, dust off those bat comics, cue up the classic episodes, and let the bat discussion begin. Thank you for taking this nostalgic trip down the Gotham memory lane with us. Your time and interest in reliving the capers of the 1966 Batman series are greatly appreciated. Until the bat signal calls us together again, keep your utility belts handy and your bat cave of memories well tended.